Hello and welcome to the news on NTA International. We thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. The highlights. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed promises that President Buhari's administration is poised to give culture and tourism sector desired attention in its next level agenda. Nigeria and Germany to explore new areas of mutual benefit for more prosperity of their countries. Plus, Pope Francis celebrates opening mass in St. Peter's Basilica, appeals for global attention on Amazon forest. And now the details. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has promised that in the next leave of President Mohamedou Buhari's administration, the culture and tourism sector will be given all the desired attention to make it play the critical role it is expected to enable it contribute to the nation's economic growth. The minister stated this at a media briefing in Lagos. Details will be brought to you in our subsequent bulletin. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama is in Namibia on a two-day official visit. He was met on arrival at the Hoshia Kutako International Airport by Nigeria's High Commissioner to Namibia, Lilian Ono, and Ambassador Selma Ashipala Musavi, Executive Director, Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation, Namibia. A statement by the SA Media to the Minister Sarah Sanders said he is expected to meet with his counterpart, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Netumbo Nandi Ndeitwa, to discuss bilateral, regional and multilateral issues of mutual interest and concern to Nigeria and Namibia on Monday, October the 7th, 2019. Still on diplomatic ties, Nigeria and Germany bilateral cooperation has seen better days with no end in sight. As both countries continue to explore new areas of mutual benefit, the latest is the signing of agreement to strengthen economic cooperation between both countries in Abuja. Benny Adams has more. Imagine a better life for 100 million Nigerians. That is exactly the target of the federal government within the next 10 years. To achieve this, the German government says Nigeria is not alone. We will especially uh, focus on creation of employment. Uh, we will focus on TVETs, that means uh, technical and vocational training. Um, and uh, we will also give some additional financing to the area of infrastructure. Nigeria and Germany's long-standing bilateral development cooperation spans 60 years with sustainable economic development, energy and security as focus. The signature on the dotted lines and the handshake bring to effect a new commitment of 70 million euros to fund key economic interventions. We therefore make the necessary efforts to ensure that the opportunities offered by these interventions and other similar initiatives are not misplaced. The volume of Germany's bilateral technical and financial corporations to Nigeria since 1959 is estimated at 729 million euros, while Germany enjoys good patronage of goods and services from Nigeria. Benny Adams, NTA News. Let's now join Justin Bermuni for trending news from other parts of the globe. Pope Francis has urged bishops to boldly shake up the status quo as they chart ways to better care for the Amazon and its indigenous people amid threats from forest fires development and what he called ideological ashes of fear. Pope Francis celebrated an opening mass in St. Peter's Basilica on Sunday with an appeal for global attention on the forest fires that are devouring the Amazon, which scientists say is a crucial bulwark against global warming. On hand for the service were indigenous people from several tribes, some with their faces painted and wearing feathered headdresses, as well as more than 180 South American cardinals, bishops and priests who donned green vestments like the Pope. And elsewhere, around 10 million eligible voters are casting ballots in Portugal's parliamentary elections on Sunday. 
The voting, which has closed, started at 8 a.m. local time. The elections marked the 16th time the Portuguese vote in the legislative elections. About 8,000 police officers were charged to ensure security during the polls. In the meantime, Mauritius Prime Minister Pravind Kumar Jagnut has dissolved the parliament and said the Indian Ocean Island would hold a general election on November 7. The country, a popular tourist destination and one of Africa's most stable nations holds elections every five years, with the last one in 2014. By law, the country has between 30 and 150 days to organize elections after the Prime Minister dissolves Parliament. Jagnut, 57, who is also Finance Minister, will seek another term as leader of the movement Socialist Militant. He has served as Prime Minister since 2017 when he took over from his father, Anirod Jugnut. Mauritian politics has been dominated by a small number of Hindu families since independence in 1968, with the last 40 years marked by stability and steady economic growth that has propelled the island into the ranks of middle-income countries. Justin Bemuyi, NTA News. Back home. 23 persons suspected to have been taken from Nigeria to Burkina Faso for greener pastures have been evacuated to Kassina State after spending no fewer than 70 days under hard labor. Abdul Malik Hassan reports that the state governor Aminu Belu Masari received the victims at the government house Katsina. 13 out of the total number of the victims are indigenous of Kassina State, while the rest are from Zamfara State. The victims were among the 31 people from the two states who were to be taken to Burkina Faso to seek for greener pasture by one Usman Hassan Wajini. However, in the course of their onward journey to Burkina Faso, the victims, according to reliable source, were handed over to an identified woman for a token amount of money. On arriving in Burkina Faso, the victims were said to have been sold to an individual and forced into slavery and hard labor for at most a month. Governor Aminu Bello Masari, who received them after they were evacuated from Burkina Faso, said the state government is making efforts to apprehend the culprits. He said the victims were lured by an agent who promised them lucrative jobs at Burkina Faso, but ended up selling them to a woman in the country. So they, 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 they are afraid of coming back home. So that's why we uh, end up with bringing only 23 of them. The governor advised the public to always bear in mind that Nigeria is their country. Hence, there is no place like Nigeria, our country, in Kassana. Abdul Malik Hassan. For a review of stories that made headlines across the world in the outgone week, here is Obiageli Ugoke. And welcome to this segment of the news. More than 100 people died in India due to flooding in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar part of the country. Officials said railroad traffic, vehicular movements, healthcare services, schools and power supply were disrupted in both states. Officials relocated more than 500 prisoners from the Balia district jail to other prisons after water entered three buildings. The state disaster management authority said the rainwater has mixed with overflowing sewage and the dirty water flooded several homes. And in Mali, at least 25 soldiers are dead and 60 more are missing after militants attacked two army outposts. Government said camps in the towns of Bolkesi and Monduro near the border with Burkina Faso came under attack on Monday. The government said their troops killed 15 militants and have since recaptured the area but lost a lot of equipment. Malian forces have now launched a joint operation with Burkina Faso and French forces in the region. This is one of the deadliest attacks against government troops this year. In other news, Zimbabwe's ruling ZANU-PF party is set to transfer ownership of the palatial home in which the late president Robert Mugabe lived in the capital Harare to his family. The clarification by ZANU-PF secretary for the administration of 
Obert and Puffo followed speculation that the party intended to turn Mugabe's Blue Reef Mansion into a museum to generate income. The party would also transfer ownership of a second home occupied by Bona Mugabe Chikore, the daughter of Mugabe and his widow Grace, to the family. Mugabe family spokesman Leo Mugabe had recently confirmed that the ex-president who ruled Zimbabwe for 37 years until he was ill in 2017 did not own either the Blue Roof Mansion or the Mount Pleasant House. Uganda President Yore Museveni ordered the release of all suspects arrested for idle and disorderly behavior under colonial era legislation. Police Chief Martin Okuf wrote to regional police commanders, instructing them to comply with the president's directive. In a report in 2016, a non governmental organization, the Human Rights Awareness and Promotion Forum, said the arrest took place under vagrancy laws introduced during British colonial rule and mostly targeted poor people who had no permanent home or employment. A study showed that 958 arrests were made in 2011 and were detained in five police stations. The president also ordered that no person be arrested under the law in future. In another development, 10 opposition political parties in Somalia say they have formed a new coalition ahead of elections which are due next year. The Forum for National Parties includes the former presidents Hassan Sheikh, Mahmoud and Sheikh Sharif, Sheikh Ahmed. Expulsman for the group say the politicians would work together to resolve the current political and security issues that the country is facing. President Mohamed Abdullahi is expected to seek re-election. And the government in Tanzania has responded to concerns about the plight of more than 200,000 Burundian refugees in the country by saying that none will be repatriated by force. This appears to be a change of position. The government had earlier given 1st October as a deadline for the Burundians to leave. They fled across the border during Burundi's 2015 political crisis, which was triggered by President Pierre Nkurunziza's push for a third term. While some of the refugees have been repatriated, the vast majority feel it is too risky to go home. The UN says only around 300 of the refugees have volunteered to go back to Burundi. That's the package. Thanks for your time. I'm Thanks, Obiageli. The Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission is seeking the inclusion of sustainable development goals and integration of gender initiatives in Nigeria's public-private partnership, especially for women in consultation, design, and execution of projects for positive impact. Herman Jabani reports that the ICRC is taking the lead as agenda setters for key players. The involvement of women in public-private partnership is to provide them with equal access to service delivery and two, to participate in decision making. And Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission is trying to strengthen that. And this is believed can be done by enhancing their capacity in transaction advisory in the delivery of public-private partnership, changing the way and manner projects are developed, designed, procured, operated and monitored is to make way for the integration of gender consideration at all levels of public-private delivery life cycle in Nigeria. This is the reason the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission is championing the crusade to harness private sector resources for the provision of public infrastructure in Nigeria. Improving the lives and opportunities of women and girls should be an explicit objective of our infrastructure and PPP projects. Well-designed, appropriately located, and affordably priced infrastructure can be a powerful tool in the pursuit of gender equality. Wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, who was represented and other stakeholders say women are daily confronted with man-made challenges which required concerted efforts to address from all fronts to boost economic and domestic activities. We must promote imbibe gender response, responsive infrastructure, that supports the sustainable development goals. They are the underdogs. They represent maybe 10% or 3% of the economy, which is definitely unacceptable. Use this forum to effectively network 
amongst ourselves and build a solid platform that will see women taking the driver's seat. The three-day conference will look at the importance of gender and public-private partnership monitoring in Nigeria and transaction advisory training, Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Here watching the news on NTA International, reaching you from Abuja. Stay tuned for more news after this timeout. Hey you! And are you had to talk to? Miss Sabi you now. It's in day your mind, Abi. The person with them go help us. Baba Torosa, Shangalo, Oganekuva, Mr. Sabi. And you know if you carry last for this one. A spirit for Tokora! Sabi said picking will crawl before him waka. So don't look, no help anybody. No dolly, no. So go for him. Go for football. Go for all Syria on the League of Marches live. Go for Go TV Max. Thanks for staying on. It was a show of class as top Nigerian celebrities and lovers of of top-notch cinema films turned out en masse to witness the premiere of the movie entitled The Enemy I Know in Abuja. Elizabeth Omori reports that the cast and crew, members of the iconic movie, producers and other celebrities in the entertainment industry were present at the premiere held at Transcorp Hilton in Abuja. <laughs> Actors, filmmakers and other key players in the creative industry on Friday night lit up the world premiere of the acclaimed star-studded blockbuster, The Enemy I Know in Abuja. Well, my expectation is to uh, sit down, relax, watch a good movie made by some of my friends and colleagues. The galaxy of stars I, I have seen definitely is going to make an impact. I'm a lavish product and therefore are committed to a responsible marketing and advertising on our products. The truth needs to be told. Not when you're about to close a billion dollar deal. Produced by Rita Daniels, mother of fast rising actor Regina Daniels, and directed by Ozomena Onwakili. The movie casts include an array of actors in the industry, such as Shola Shobawali, Jide Kusoko, Desmond Elliott, Ken Eriks. Regina Daniels and Tana Adelano, among other casts. It's a daily thing that happens in every home, in every relationship, in every family. The enemy I know, definitely, it could be your brother, it could be your sister, it could be your friend out there. As I speak to you, Netflix is on it. So that means it fits the standard. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker that makes one, makes one film every year. So for you to get to my standard, you have to, you must... Yeah, you must give me what I asked for. The Enemy I Know, a movie in a class of its own, is a story that seeks to advocate gender equality and a place for the girl child in family, leadership and society at large. By law, I own this place and everything you ever hold. For 25 years, I have been preparing myself for today and I will not let you take this moment away from me. I played the character of the daughter of a wealthy man, Zara. He loved Zara so much that he had to give all of his properties to Zara. I played the role of a very, a very good and calculated lover boy as usual, but with a different twist. The amazing movie, whose sound, lighting and quality is second to none, was shot at various locations in the Federal Capital Territory with 8K cameras and a budget of more than 150 million naira. This movie is going to really make girls to now become very confident of themselves and to speak out. With passion being an ingredient that drives people to reach in their zenith, the movie is a call to know that everybody, irrespective of gender, should be given a chance. The Enemy I Know will hit cinemas on the 11th of October across Nigeria. The Extra Ordinary Federal Executive Council FEC meeting 
has been postponed to Monday, October the 7th, 2019, at 12 noon. Special Advisor to the President, Femi Adesino, said the meeting is to put finishing touches to the year 2020 budget, which will still be presented to the National Assembly by 12 p.m. on Tuesday. And our sports. Nigeria's SA Brume just won the nation's first medal at the World Athletics Championship in Doha after leading 6.91 meters in women's long jump final for bronze. Kene Emago DK brings us details on Sports Update. Nigeria's Super Falcons continue to intensify preparation at the Agege Township Stadium in Lagos ahead of Monday's must-win second-leg second-round Tokyo 2020 qualifier against their Cote d'Ivoire counterpart. The nine-time African champions who were held to a goalless draw in the first leg in Abidjan last Thursday are plotting to claim maximum points in Lagos to complement their first-round victory over Algeria. Monday's crucial encounter is slated for 4 p.m. After failing to pick automatic tickets at the World Athletics Championships in Doha, Qatar, Blessing Okaware Ihotuogono believes the nation's women's 4x100 meters relay team can still qualify for Tokyo 2020 Olympics. It should be a more structured um, program for us as a relay team. Get us to a place where we can actually maybe, even if it's a week, just take us off for, for the week. I know other countries like the US, they do that a lot, just, just for the relay camp. The curtain falls on the 17th World Athletics Championships Sunday. Meanwhile, in mixed martial arts, Israel Adesonia extended his perfect professional record to 18-0 as a dethroned UFC middleweight champion Robert Whittaker in spectacular fashion at the UFC 243 in Melbourne, Australia on Sunday. The 30-year-old Nigerian produced a near-punch perfect performance to finish Whittaker after 3 minutes and 33 seconds of the second round and capture the undisputed UFC middleweight title in front of nearly 60,000 fans at Marvel Stadium. Former kickboxing star Adesanya gained global attention in mixed martial art in 2018 after arriving in the UFC with an undefeated 10-0 record. With sports update, Kenan Ima Abodike, NTA News. And that's the news at this hour on NTA International. We thank you for watching. I'm Lydia Odije Ochi. Bye for now. International. This is NTA International. Odidua University, Ipitimudu, PMB 5533 Ilefe, a federal government licensed university. Admissions into full-time, part-time degrees and postgraduate degrees are now on. Courses available are bachelor's degree and master's degrees at the College of Management and Social Sciences, College of Natural and Applied Sciences, College of Engineering and Technology, as well as College of Environmental Designs and Management. At Odudua University, we also have College of Entrepreneurial Studies where students learn various vocations and trade before graduation. At Odudua University, we also have the Center for International Studies and Exchange Programs where our students in Part 3 spend a semester in countries like the USA, UK, Germany, Russia and Ghana. Report for screening this Thursday at 12 p.m. at Odudua University, Ipetumudu, PMB 5533, Ilefe. Telephone 080-5656-5656 or Odudua Polytechnic, 213 Egbeda Idumu Road, Idimu, Lagos. 
telephone 080-5855-5558. You can also visit us at Odudua College of Professional Studies, opposite First Bank, near Uniban, Uburo, Benin City. Telephone 070-5655-5554 or Akpodi Settlement Area, Abuja 080-5656-5656. Visit our website at www.oduduauniversity.edu.ng. We can also change your university of choice to Odudua University. OUI fees are affordable and we also grant scholarships. Odudua do a university? Yes, committed to qualitative education. In line with the visions of the Odudua University Ipetumodu and the Polytechnic Ileife to graduate students who will not only be self-reliant but also become job creators rather than job seekers and in tune with the directives of the Federal Government of Nigeria through the National Universities Commission and the National Board for Technical Education that tertiary institutions in Nigeria should integrate entrepreneurial studies into their curriculum. The Dr. Ramon Adegoki Adedoni led management of the two institutions established the Center for Entrepreneurial and Vocational Studies. Over the years, the annual entrepreneurial and vocational training exercise has become a model for all other institutions of higher learning in the country. At the two institutions, all the students are expected to undergo minimum of three month vocational training to acquire skills in different vocations before graduation. Students of Odudua University, Ipetumodu, and the Polytechnic, Ileife, are given the opportunity to enroll for different trades or vocations and are placed under different professional trainers for a period of not less than three months during the long second semester break. The climax of the exercise is usually the exhibition week, during which the students showcase all the skills that have been learned, as well as display some of the products produced during the three months training. Students come out in groups to make presentations on all they have been taught. My name is Mrs. Asolani Adele and um, we are, I'm in mass communication department, the Polytechnic Ileife, and our profession is photography. The Chancellor of Odudua University, Ipetumodu, and Executive Chairman, the Polytechnic Ileife, Dr. Ramon Adedoni, who graced this year's exhibition, commended the students and the organizers of the training. He reiterated the commitment of the institutions to assist candidates who can come up with good proposals in their chosen vocations through the provision of startup capital. Also present at the event was the wife of the Chancellor, Chief Mrs. Iyabodi Olufumilayo Adedoni, who is also the chairperson of the Center for Entrepreneurial and Vocational Studies. channel where you be watch just now don't work huh? no panic can you mean no panic you go do it by yourself like abc oh yeah press the menu button on top of your remote scroll up and down till you see information central then press ok mm, press okay. ok check the signal strength and quality if the signal strength and quality pass 70 make you press the exit button go back go advanced options then choose installation then go to reset and press ok yeah, press ok yeah. Wow, now you say fit catch all those channels will be one miss road by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your 